Yeah, I'm Peter Black. I'm a urologic oncologist at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver with a clinical and research interest in bladder cancer. I think the, the main rationale is just that, that non-invasive bladder cancer gives us the opportunity to treat by putting drugs into the bladder so you can have um, good tumor kill effect but minimize side effects so it allows you opportunity to avoid systemic toxicity of taking drugs by you know intravenous infusion or by oral tablet um, and that's the same whether it's bcg unresponsive or not it just it, it, uh, it offers the best way to to balance efficacy with toxicity It's um, definitely something that's that's evolving. Um, we've had several drugs over the years um, that we use. Uh, we haven't had particularly good evidence for any of them. Uh, some people will go to a single agent chemotherapy such as mitomycin or gemcitabine. Um, it's, it's become quite popular in the United States and Canada to use the combination of intravesical gemcitabine and docetaxel. And there was one multi-center retrospective study published last year that showed fairly good results with that. And I know in Canada, a lot of people like to use BCG plus interferon as a second line, uh, again, in the absence of, of terrific data. And in Europe and the UK, um, the um, device-assisted delivery has become a little bit more popular. So uh, chemohypothermia um, or the electromotive mitomycin. Um, radiotherapy is an option for patients with high-grade T1 disease after uh, BCG. Um, again, there's not great data, but we, we do know that uh, radiation with uh, sensitizing chemotherapy, so trimodal therapy, can be beneficial in uh, BCG-naive T1 uh, especially the group at Airline in, in Germany has, has shown that in previous publications. Yeah, uh, and this is the, the focus of, of most of my talk is that uh, we do have a couple of, of exciting drugs in the pipeline. Um, there are two intravestal drugs that are currently under review with the FDA in the United States. One of them is natopharagene, which is a gene therapy. So it's an adenovirus that introduces the gene for interferon 2 alpha, um, which then has an anti-cancer effect. And we've seen the trial data on that and it's been published and it, it looks encouraging. That would be for patients uh, with BCG unresponsive carcinoma in situ. And then there's another drug, opertuzumab, uh, which is like an antibody drug conjugate um, that delivers a, a, a toxic payload to cancer cells. And it uh, has similar um, results and is also under review. It is given, the, the natopharagene is given every three months, which is a, a convenient schedule, whereas opertuzumab is given much more frequently, which is a bit uh, inconvenient, but both of them are very well tolerated. Then there are other things that are still uh, in clinical, dry, clinical trial stage. Uh, for example, there's a, a novel treatment being tested uh, in Canada and the US that is photodynamic therapy. So you put in a, a photosensitizer into the bladder for an hour, and then you apply a light through a cystoscope, and it will eradicate tumor cells in the inner lining of the bladder. So there are other, other things like that and other drugs that are under development. And, and I think it's a, a glass half full, glass half empty situation where we're, we're happy to have these drugs, but they're not quite as, as good as we would like them to be. And we, and we still need significant improvements uh, if we're going to um, avoid cystectomy in a lot of patients. Well, I think the, the other issue is, um, you know, we also have systemic immunotherapy for uh, BCG unresponsive bladder cancer. And, and that's a real paradigm shift because we're, we're not used to giving drugs systemically. Um, and the, the efficacy is, is similar to the intravesical drugs. 
And so the question is, how do you, uh, which one do you give to the patient first? And you know, that's something we have to sort out. Uh, I think a lot of the, the truly cystectomy ineligible patients will um, benefit from having multiple uh, therapies that they can try. And I think uh, an important path forward will be to test some of these drugs in combination, so especially immunotherapy plus one of the intravesical uh, drugs. And so I think that's something that we'll have to focus on with, with new uh, clinical trials.